Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. Welcome back to my shop. So on the workbench this week, I have, what is this even? Apparently it is wall decor that was $60 marked down to $15. But why is it on my workbench? Well, some local fans of the channel picked this up and I think they're gonna use it as a towel rack, but I'm not 100% certain. But it is, even though it sort of looks like bamboo, it is actually uh, metal. And on this end, it has like a little foot stuck to it that's not even stuck to it very well. And on this end, it's got nothing. And because it is metal, uh, it's got some sharp edges on it, and it's going to chew up whatever floor it's on. So they asked if I could make, uh, they asked if I could make one of these, one of these little bumpers on the bottom. And... I guess we could probably do that. We could probably design that um, and print that in TPU. But, I mean, this is not a good solution anyway. Uh, these things never stay in place. It's only a matter of time, even if I had another one exactly like this or if we made one, that this guy would, uh, you know, would end up staying on there. It's going to come off. So let's do something better. Let's come up with a piece that fits over this, probably out of TPU, and also has something on the bottom to give us some friction because the one thing that this does have going for it is it's rubber and you know if we lean this up against the wall it's going to do a good job stopping this from sliding if we use tpu for this or really any 3d printed material it's not going to have uh sort of like this rubber i know you guys can't feel this but it is it kind of almost feels like a pencil eraser whereas when i'm rubbing my thumb on it it doesn't want to slide it wants to grab it Whereas this is just a smooth surface, it slides easy. TPU, even though it has many of the properties of, like, say, a soft, uh, maybe silicone rubber, is what I think this probably is, um, it doesn't have that surface that's grippy. So we'll have to figure that part out, but I do have an idea for that. So, all right, I'm going to get a measurement of the diameter of this, and let's go start drawing something up. And I really hope nobody ever actually paid... Uh, 60 bucks for one of these things because, yeah, I'm just not seeing it. But you know what? I'm also not the uh, target market for wall decor from Hobby Lobby either. So, all right, let's get to drawing. All right, and our test piece is done, and it came out pretty good. I printed this, again, like down like this, and did a brim on the inside, and I cut that off, and I was kind of expecting to see a bit more of a mess in there from the bridging, but the bridging honestly came out pretty darn good. I, I don't know if you guys can see that in there. It's not bad. I can't remember trying to bridge with TPU before. Um, I, I was just anticipating it was going to be difficult, but actually it came out pretty clean. Um, I'm already feeling like this lip here on the bottom isn't quite enough. We did this at half a millimeter. The, the cork that I want to use on this is two millimeters thick, and it's going to compress a little bit under load. So I don't want to go too high with that lip, but I feel like we didn't go quite high enough. And we'll go from 0.5 to 0.7. And I'm not really liking this bottom edge either. I did a curved, like a round over here since this was going to be the, uh, the top anyway, and I knew it would print clean. But I don't like just the width of it. I feel like if this thing is sitting like against the wall at an angle that we are risking not really being on the cork, but quickly getting onto this edge. So not super happy with that either. And <laughs> lastly, um, I feel like it's too flexible on the bottom. Now, why is that an issue? Well, if we put cork on here, what I don't want to happen is this to maybe get set down on something that allows the, uh, the cork to get pushed in. I think we probably just need to add another millimeter of solid material there. But overall, it looks pretty good. And honestly, the, the color is pretty close. I picked up a roll of this. This is Sane Smart TPU. I always get the Sane Smart TPU. Uh, there, there might be plenty of other good TPUs, but I ordered Sane Smart for the first time. I don't know, five years ago, the first time I did a TPU part, and I was so happy with it, I just keep buying Sane Smart. I'll link it down below. I've got, I think at this point, four or five colors of this, and they've all been great. All right, let's see if this actually fits on here. It 
yeah, actually the size is perfect. I sized the, the inside diameter of this to be exactly the same as the OD of this, just figuring it would flex and go on there, and it does. It's nice and snug. There's no way this thing is coming off on its own. So, all right, we know our fit's good. I'm going to go make those revisions, and I will bring you guys back. All right, and here is our updated test piece, and here it is side by side with our V1, and you can see just from the shadow line, even adding only 0.2 millimeters to the depth of uh, sort of this, uh, this recess or this bore here at the bottom, um, I feel like that's now going to be sufficient to retain the cork. Um, I'm glad I did. I, I almost went to one millimeter on that, but I think 0.7 is sufficient, and that gives us then 1.3 millimeters of height uh, from the, uh, the cork that should be exposed past that. And you can see I also reshaped the, the bottom so we have, you know, kind of a much better, I guess you could almost call it like an approach angle to, uh, to that, that cork on the bottom. And I added uh, one millimeter more of material down here on the bottom. And that is, yeah, here's the old one. Yeah, that's definitely substantially better. This one pushes in really easy. This one, um, I could still push it, but uh, it's definitely putting up much more of a fight. So, all right, I think it's time to cut the cork for this, and that's pretty small. I could definitely cut that by hand, but it's not going to come out very clean. I checked. I don't have any punches that size, but then I remembered I have a laser. This laser has been absolutely awesome for projects like this. Yeah, I probably could have cut these out by hand, or if I had a metal punch set, maybe we could have gotten close, but I'm able to take the, the drawing that we did, the same drawing for the 3D print, just export that bottom face as a DXF, and in seconds, I've got two of these. This is the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. I did a whole review video on this. If you missed it, I will link that down in the description below. It is a really nice complement to 3D printing. All right, those came out great, and... Um, yeah, I mean, that, that machine is like an easy button for material like this. I would say next to a 3D printer, as much as I love all my machine tools out here in the shop, the laser is probably the second most useful machine for like DIY and just, you know, hobbyists in general, just because it's so universal in what you can do. I mean, you know, one minute we're cutting cork, the next minute I'm making custom gaskets, the next minute I'm making some sort of cool wood thing for my wife that looks like something you'd buy at the store for, you know, 20 or 30 bucks. And meanwhile, I'm just like cutting it out of scrap wood. So, all right, let's see if these fit. It should, since I used the, the same uh, dimensions as the bottom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that fits. Yeah, it's a tiny bit of play in it, but that's just perfect. So, all right, we need another one of these now, and then I think we can start getting everything actually assembled here. All right, second one is done, and I brought the sheet out because I wanna show you guys a pretty cool trick. So this is TPU and it's printed on a textured PEI sheet. And I used to print all my TPU on like the wide blue masking tape. I'd either put it down on, on um, well, not this sheet. I'd put it down on the smooth PEI sheet or just a plain steel sheet. And the advantage of that was when the print was done, I could basically peel the tape off the sheet and then peel the other side of the tape off the printed parts and they released really nice. The downside is it's a pain to deal with the tape. You have seams, so if you have a large print, you have that seam in the tape to deal with, and often the tape separates a little bit, and then you have like, you know, if that's your, if that surface is important to you, and now you can see the seam in it, there's just really no way to get rid of it. I started printing on just plain old textured PEI sheets when I discovered a pretty cool trick. The problem with doing this is getting the part to release. TPU holds on really well to a textured PEI sheet. Let me grab something, let me show you the trick. Okay, this is isopropyl alcohol. Um, I do get the 99.9% .9 pure stuff rather than like the 70 or the 90% stuff that they sell at the drugstore. I don't know that it matters for this. I do use the 99.9 .9 for cleaning my sheets and I do think it really matters for that. It probably doesn't matter for what I'm about to show you. I've also got just a little cheap uh, like chip brush here. 
So, all right. So, you, I mean, you're gonna have to take my word for it that this is really stuck on here now. I could not uh, pop this off. I don't know which would give first if I just, um, you know, held onto the sheet and popped this guy off. I don't know if the part would come off the textured sheet or if some of the textured material that's powder coated on here would come off and stay on the part. I don't wanna find out because I don't have a bunch of these sheets, but uh, all you have to do is dip your brush. I mean, you can also just dump some out, but that's wasteful. Uh, dip your brush into the isopropyl alcohol and then brush it all around where the print contacts the plate. And I'm gonna do it down here on my intro line as well. Anywhere where you have TPU stuck to the sheet. And then all you really have to do is just give it a couple seconds. All right, it's been about 30 seconds. And what I think is happening is I think the alcohol wicks in between the TPU and the textured surface. Because now what I can do is, now it's not gonna fall off, but now I can take this and I can just kind of pry a little bit and it releases so easy. Hopefully you can see, I mean, if this, if this guy was still stuck on there, the sheet would be flexing with me trying to pry this off. That popped off about as easy as, actually I would say it pops off easier than PLA on a hot sheet, probably about the same as PLA would, PLA would pop off like a warm sheet. I know when the sheet's cool, the PLA basically falls off, but if you've ever like, you know, tried to get a PLA print off a textured PEI sheet when it's still warm, it sticks about that much. All right, let's get this trimmed up now. We have to get this brim off of here. Uh, this is interesting. Take a look at this. So it's super humid here today. In fact, it's raining. We haven't had rain in a couple of weeks, but it is pouring today. And it's also quite humid. I dried this filament overnight the first two prints, well, the first one was almost perfectly clean inside. The second one had a little bit of a mess. Look at this guy. This is this, is this material, this TPU, uh, sucking up humidity from the air. I printed all three of these, the test piece, and then our first uh, you know, finished design, and then this one, all within about, I don't know, maybe four or five hours. And there is a tremendous difference. Let's see, where's our test one? Okay, here's the test one. So this is the first one that was done. I did nothing to clean out the inside of this part. You guys see that? Look at this one. That's not the bridging. That's just stringing from inside the part during the, uh, the print process because it picked up humidity. Now, it doesn't really matter in this part because I can just trim all that away anyway. It's gonna be on the inside. But keep that in mind if you're printing with TPU. You really, really need to dry the filament right before you print. And if it's humid out, you're only going to get a couple of hours of usable time out of that filament before you need to dry it again. All right, I'm going to clean this out. All right, that looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, that's gonna be on the inside anyway. We just don't want that to interfere with the fit on the, uh, the leg. So yeah, I think that's good. And you can see in there, the bridging's fine. That was all just stringing from the uh, filament picking up moisture. So, all right, we gotta glue the, the cork onto these. This is actually self-adhesive cork. I'm a little worried though that whatever's on here is not gonna grip onto the TPU. TPU is hard to glue to. I think what is probably going to work the best is actually a product that is designed for shoes. Let me grab it. This stuff is called Shoe Goo. I've used this on the channel before. One of the reasons I end up using this a lot for 3D printing is because it's designed for all of the materials that end up getting used in shoes. And I actually think that uh, TPU is one of the materials that is fairly commonly used in shoes. So it's actually designed for it. I'll link this in the description below. Do not buy a big tube of it. I buy these little ones that are 5.1 grams. I mean, they're pretty tiny, but the reason I do that is because this stuff tends to dry out. If you don't use it for, I don't know, maybe six months, you might still get it to squeeze out, but it is dry enough that it doesn't like to stick to stuff. Uh, every single time I've bought like a big tube of it, I've gotten maybe two uses out of it and then it's too dry. Uh, these little ones, you get, I don't know, like there's like five in a pack maybe. And then if it dries up, it's no big deal. Throw it away and open another one. 
All right, now that I think about it, I, I'm actually going to, I'm gonna put these on first. I'm worried if we glue the cork on and then press these into place that this is potentially gonna stretch a little bit and then uh, put some stress on that glue and cause it not to stick as well. So let's actually install these on our wall decor first. All right, fits really nice. And I'm gonna remove this uh, this foot that's on here. Yeah, that came off way too easy. That thing was gonna, that would have fallen off on its own in a matter of a couple of weeks. Okay, those are both on. I realize you guys, you guys can't see them. Oh, there you go. Now you can see them both in frame at the same time. All right, let's glue the cork on. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the the backing off, and then I'm going to actually put a little bit of the shugu. Let's make sure this stuff is still nice and and uh, liquid. Yeah, that's the consistency you want it to be. You see how it's kind of stringy? It's, um, I don't know, maybe the consistency of like molasses. Once it gets harder than that, don't use it. I'm just gonna rotate it a bit to make sure that that is spread all around. And then you just gotta leave it alone for, I think it sets up in a couple of hours, but it takes, I believe, two days until it is completely cured where you really wanna trust it. All right, well, the angle's a little weird because this thing is, really long, it's tough to get in front of the camera, but that looks, looks really good. All right guys, I am pretty happy with how this came out. Let me know down in the comments if there's anything that you would have done differently or if there's any different materials that you would have used for this. I'll put the STL for this uh, on my site, fpfdesigns.com, just like everything we do on this channel. Uh, anything that we create, anything you know that I customize, the STLs are always available completely for free. I don't charge for any of them. You can download them for free on my site, fpfdesigns.com. And I realized this was a little bit, you know, kind of simple in comparison to some of the projects that we do on this channel, but it's on purpose. I feel like this is a lot closer to, you know, more what the average user is going to start doing, you know, once they sort of, you know, get over that hump and, you know, move from just downloading stuff and printing it to, you know, doing some basic design work to, you know, fix something that's broken or add a feature to something that, you know, uh, you wish it had. You know, in this case, not only did we you know, better than just replacing that missing bumper, I think our redesign here is far better than what the original solution was. Guys, as always, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me for this week's design and print. If you got anything out of this video at all, do me a favor, take a second, hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. Also gives YouTube an idea of the type of stuff that you actually like to watch and it'll suggest more of that stuff to you. And if this is your first time here on the channel, I do a new functional print every single week, every Friday. I cover the, you know, the need for the design, the design, we cover the print, the installation, uh, all that, and the STLs are always free. So if you like that, hit the subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.